We should ask him the 21 questions. Well, On the spot! We, good night. You gotta get That's the video, bro. Are you ready? Audio video? engineer. Audio engineer just wait. popped in. Yeah, we got an audio engineer, no big deal. <laughs> I just like the word audio engineer yeah. because I will, well, I'm gonna be a coach all my life, but never have the word engineer after mm. my name. Sounds nice, hey? I, I will call you coach engineer. Oi, that's a good one. Strength engineer. <laughs> that's my new Instagram. No, no, stay. We're gonna, we've got a bit of a question to ask you. Right. So, put, he's putting his headphones down because yep. not everyone's watching. I just realised. <laughs> now he's coming back. In. Hopefully, by the, actually, no, by definitely by the time it's on YouTube, people will will, will, will have YouTube. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. um, Insta fame. He'll go. He'll go. YouTube famous now. Who? No. Yes. 100%. Do you want to finish a mouthful of food? That's right. Really what are you good. eating? Stir fry. Did we, you, we just say the same thing? Yes, we did. <laughs> In sync. We are. We are actually the greatest two people. Um, so, Niall. Yes. You have come on board as our audio engineer, mm. uh, which is pretty sick, and obviously leveled up our gear, and not just by a little bit, like by a fuck ton. Mm. So, you've been... In, that was... Yeah, Johnny's holding up the old microphone. Not everyone remember watches us, but... Oh yeah, you can't see it. <laughs> um, this is gonna be the oddest podcast because it's late Saturday afternoon. You've just trained. You're still like on a high. I'm always good. You never come down. No. I'm on the other hand, like let's crash. My training did not go well, which we'll discuss later. But no, audio engineer. Mm. Twenty one words to describe yourself, including ums, ahs, any sort of sound. Oh, that's hard. Johnny, that doesn't count. Like we haven't started. Um, Johnny's counting. Twenty-one words to describe yourself, and go. Um, musician all my life. Studied music. How many am I at? That's like eleven. Um, I love lifting. Um, that's you're up to fifteen. Fifteen. That's sixteen. <laughs> It's really hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Niall. Well done. Welcome, <laughs> well, no, Niall. You really That's can't. my cameo on there. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm good on the computer. Yeah, I can't talk. <laughs> but seriously, massive shout out to Niall. If you guys have any audio questions, I will drop them in the show notes. Reach out. This guy is phenomenal. The oh, gear. I already had people ask me how to podcast. And they should, definitely shouldn't ask us. I am not the person. No. Now we have the person. No. We have someone in charge of us. Fuck. Little does he know how hard that job is. <laughs> so, just us today. Yeah. Welcome to the platform podcast. I think it's fair that we did some of our own questions. Yeah, hundred percent. So you get first. 21 no, you go. <laughs> twenty-one questions. Twenty-one words. Who you, who, who you are and what you do. Hold on, because we haven't started. Is it always been what we do? Who you are and what you do. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I've written down. I copy and paste it across for each person. Okay, cool, cool. So you ready? Yeah, not ready. Shaking it off. Okay. You gotta say go. No, you're going first. Yeah, but you gotta say go. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, I am a coach. Specifically to powerlifting. I am in love with anything Marvel. My mantra is inspire, impact, and influence. That's 17. You got room for more if you want them. That's four more. Oh. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is actually really hard. This is. I feel hard. sorry for everyone who asked this to now. I've so, been stressed for the last six minutes since we decided to do this. Yeah, so <laughs> everyone listening, he tried to prepare for this, and I'm like, no, we don't give anyone else. So... And go. Johnny B. Bad. Nelson. Oh, he finally said it. Coach. Personal trainer. Gym owner. Love powerlifting. That's Just 10. love helping people. That's 14. I also love lifting. That's 17? No, 18. Three more. 
Fuck, I really want four more. Dude, you just lost it. <laughs> Damn it. We really suck at this harrowing game. Damn. It is actually a lot harder than I expected. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, honestly, so anyone who we have previously interviewed, we apologize. <laughs> but welcome. Welcome. We did a shout out for some questions on the gram. Um, These were great. Thank you to everyone who gave us very intelligent questions. Challenging and... Um, I and feel like... People who really wanted to know more. Yes. Now... I just want to give a shout out to Luke Poli, who gets a mention nearly every podcast for asking why Team Epic is so great, but misspelled Team Epic. <laughs> that was the best. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'll go two. I've got two of them. Um, Sam Hodby, thank you for listening. You asked how many sandwiches is enough. I don't want to put a limit on how many you can eat. I think that would be silly. You can have as many as you want. Again, within context for anyone who listened to our last podcast. Potentially not dietetic advice right there. Yes, and Johnny also eats food outside of it. Yes. Can you confirm? I confirm I eat other foods other than sandwiches. Um, however, I do find sandwiches delicious. And easy to prep. Very easy meal prep. You can punch out a loaf of bread worth of meal prep in minutes. True. Butter Very. chicken mayonnaise. Done. Look... This is going to sound really seedy coming across the quad pass, but that mayonnaise you put on that last sandwich you made for me was fucking unreal. Yeah, we made... You are like... You know how you have a guy for everything? You're my go-to food guy. <laughs> What'd you get? Did you get any good ones? No, Polly's was the best. Yeah. Um, also, people wanted to know why I was so black in our logo. Because at heart, I am black. Yeah. I wonder if I can... I, should, I can say that. Leave that in there. No. You can say whatever you like. But yeah, I'm... Um, like Mediterranean European but yeah European same sure. thing. is it? I don't know I'm not very geographical Nile is that true? we're not sure of the Nile what? is Mediterranean and European the same thing? I'll Google it thank you thank you no, this I'll is Google all that I'm having a guy now yeah um, I feel like I, I set a goal for us to take over Joe Rogan um, in five years now with Nile I think we'll do it in 12 months that's a big call. Yeah, let's do it. Shout out Joe Rogan. Come Shout on our podcast. <laughs> if somehow that got back to Joe and he came onto our podcast, Oof. I think I would... We've got some big names coming up. Yeah, dude. Um, but I'm like, oh, Joe. Yeah. In the podcast realm? 100%. Man, we had some cool ones already, though, yeah. We have. We've had Ricky. Ricky Goodyear, the king. Um, Luke Poley. Yep. The fucking gentle giant that he is. I love that one. That one, obviously, will be released by the time this gets released. Yeah, that's, that's out now. Yeah, that's out now. Yeah. Um, check it out. It is. He goes deep. My favorite thing about Polly is that you tell him to talk, he will talk. Mm-hmm. And they're like, there is... It, I thought we weren't going to touch on some topics, but we just go full deep. And I think it was one of the best podcasts we've done. Yep. Gwen, the week after. That unreal. was unreal. Um, he, shout out to Big G. He's a legend. He really is, man. Like that, the he's got so much time for people willing to put in the effort. Yeah, and he's already given us some ideas for us, for us, for the team, the crew. Like he's coming back up, obviously for the next training camp. Yeah, um, loved it up here. Actually, turned out he was my parents' bank manager. That's bizarre. It was odd. <laughs> I was like, so you guys actually know each other. Cool. Um, and we just had Amy, Amy, Amy Cox from yeah. Target Nutrition. She's awesome. She's a... She, I've, we got a lot out of her. We spoke a lot about nutrition. Absolutely. I l- want to get her back on and talk more a little bit about her business. 100%. She's a... Like, how she works, the amount of hours she works, still trains. Yep. It's fucked. And I think... Uh, not to take anything... She's 28. Yeah. She's 28, finished a degree, owns a multiple site business, internationally renowned. She's a dietitian. Fucking awesome. Works with incredibly top level athletes and then in different disciplines it works with us yeah it works with <laughs> us but that kind of like uh, makes me feel quite you know yeah. like fuck we get to work with her yeah like, that's insane and unreal if anyone's chasing food advice she, she's the only one place to go yeah target nutrition yeah and she's got she's got multiple businesses she's got the physique science with the DEXA scans and stuff as well that's when we discussed that on the last podcast is actually really fucking more useful than just checking out your fucking body composition. Yeah. They didn't even think of the applications from it, but 
yeah. yeah, like as we discussed, you know, we found out one of my clients has more muscle mass on one side of his legs. On one of his legs. Like how that, that's going to affect so much. So. And that's not something you're going to see just by looking at your human. Or that through a fucking skin training. fold. Yeah. Like the application of death changes well beyond what I thought it was. So that was a really cool podcast. 100%. And we've already, because we're super organized, got some cool people coming up. Are you trying the- to fool people that we're organized? Um, my, Niles organized. Niles is super organized. Yes. Uh, we got some super cool people coming up next week. Yes, we got Leah yeah. coming on next week. Now she is a dietitian as well. Yeah. Vegan. So Ooh. she comes from a vegan background. Um, she trains out of Valhalla. Really, really cool chick. Yeah, and not just a vegan. A vegan with an actual degree to back up everything she's going to talk about. Exactly. And she comes from a lifting background. Yeah. Her mum was a bodybuilder. Um, she's got a really cool story. She, I'll let her explain it. Obviously, when this yeah, comes out I, next week, but I know I've got some some vegan vegetarian clients that are just for raw thing to, yeah. to hear what she has to say. I really want like I've heard this obviously because I'm good friends with Leah, but her um, view on that documentary Game Changes. Yeah, that's amazing. Really cool. Amazing. <laughs> Everyone just wait. Can't wait to see that. Scotty Watson. The fucking OG. OG of Palestine, Australia, Brisbane. Yeah. Let's call it modern times. Honestly, like, besides probably Marcos, Mm. he'd be the person when I think of Australian powerlifting. It's Scott Watson. If we're talking specifically Queensland, Scott Watson. Without a doubt. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Scott. No. And also physically here today in this building. Absolutely. He is a legend. Yeah. I look forward... I generally look forward to his story. Like, I want to get into like I really from wanna, zero yeah. to where it is, and just the evolution of where he is at now. I really want to talk about like the development of Scott's and my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an inside scoop because you know, now like I'm not going to allude to anything more than that. But we've obviously Scott and I met from a mutual friend, your old coach, your old coach, your fuck I about that. <laughs> Your best mate. I um, um, never went out with him. But we will discuss that when he comes on. Yeah. And then who else we got? Uh, Cleo. Cleo Van Wick. The sh- one of the sh- like, sh- she's the strongest in Australia. Chicks. Has, has to be. She I, went seven oh five. I can't think of another girl outside of the quid lifting. Yeah. Who would have done that in Australia? That's she's a fucking. Freak. Huge, and she's been around a, a while. Yeah, and she's got a cool good, story. Good, good background. Overseas. So nervous about rocking now, dude. No, I said no rocking. I know, but I I got to lean back now, and I'm trying to do it real slowly so there's yeah. no sound. Nailed it. And I spoke to her today. She sounds super jazzed to be coming on this. And something we've talked about is making sure we've got a really strong representation of, of, of women and, and ladies yeah. coming on board and having a place to chat I think we're very lucky to be in the position we are and be surrounded by like some fucking not just strong women mm. but their stories what they preach their message across it's gonna be fucking sick yeah another one I'm super pumped about and you're going to be super pumped about is Johannes is coming on now no one if you look him up oh yes yes look him I, up on like Instagram I, I, to, I can look up his Instagram while we're talking about him but he works closely with Wim Hof. That's going to be dope. And we're doing that. And so on the day that we podcast, if it works out, we will do the Wim Hof Johanna seminar. And then we will have him on board on the podcast straight afterwards. And you've done the seminar before? Yeah, it's insane. Like you do, he does some real... Well, we go, well, we don't, do we want to leave Leah? Give nah, too much? Not too much. Okay, too much. Look him up. If you don't know who Wim Hof is, look him up. Everyone should know who Wim Hof is. That's going to be super If you don't know who Wim Hof is, yeah. search it first, then search Johannes. I'm not going to even try to pronounce his name. <laughs> <laughs> All he's going to get from me is, hey, mate. Uh, we got, we've, we've re, we haven't we locked it in, but I think it's locked in as far as we're concerned. Kev has said Runa is keen to jump on Yes, board. and who is Runa? Runa's good. Uh, trains out of Thor's gym. Over in, in Iceland? Yeah, the Thor. And is incredibly good friends with him. And currently, I don't know the right word, but videographer. He's literally following around on his prep into World's, Strong. into Arnold's. 
the Arnold Schwarzenegger okay. strongman thing. Yeah, sick. He's literally following all of his sessions, doing some training with him in it, videoing, recording it, putting it all on YouTube, documenting the whole thing. That's awesome. So he, we've got to reach out and lock that date in, but that's going to be cool. Fuck yeah. And then we've already got Ed Cohn. The GOAT. The GOAT. The powerlifting GOAT. Yeah. So we're going to lock that down, date, everything. I'm going to have to practice talking. Because I'm... I'm, <laughs> I'm... I'm very privileged enough to have uh, interacted with Ed on many occasions now. We chat a bit every now and then. But I'm... Like, I'm more excited. Like, I'm more excited to watch you interact with Ed. <laughs> I'm like... Hi. Bring the tissues. Hi, Ed. Hi. My name's... My name's Jackie Nelson. Well, technically, we've had breakfast together. Wasn't well, he in just the same cafe? Um, he was sitting in a table next to us. But, and he was having breakfast, and we had breakfast, and I said hello, and he said hello. So, as far as I'm concerned, we had breakfast together. No, I'll send me this clip of the audio. I'm sending this straight to Ed. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, no yeah. doubt, remember me. Because we're going to do that at Pro, Pro Rule. Yeah. Which is coming up fucking quick. I don't want to count the weeks, but it's not far away. It's like seven or eight, because I had to count today. Yeah. Well, from this, when this gets released, it'll probably be like fucking four. I'm not good at future. Yeah. Well, nobody is. Somewhere after this will be that. Yeah. And then. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love you so much. You're the greatest human on the planet. But we've locked out two full days minimum yeah. to get as many people on as possible. Yeah, and just chat. Yeah. yeah. People. So anyone in Melbourne, if you're interested, want to keen to have. Ariane, my boy, we are getting you on. Yeah. I want to talk to you. This guy is the hype man. He gets around anything, man. He is a legend. Cool. So we'll definitely get you on our own. But um, yes, two full days of podcasting in Melbourne. Yeah, I look forward to getting your epic crew on board. Yes, that, can, that are competing. We've got either, a few competitors. Um, either before or after, it'd be sick. Oh, man, Lily. I yeah. Lily. She'll be awkward as fuck, which will be hilarious for us. Yeah, she's my squad inspiration. She is a squat inspiration and one your squat training partner. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, privileged to be able to train with her. She'll be fucking so we got Lily, Susie, Pagan, Brock, and Brock and Kane. For so far locked in. Hopefully by then we'll have Andrew Lang in the mix as well. Sick. I'd love to. Yeah, I can't wait to get a few of them on and just have a little chin lang around. We gotta get the twins on together, Kane and Lang. They absolutely have to come on together. Together. Like they sit, they sit in the same chair together. I don't know if they have the chair. A big chair. That's a big chair. <laughs> we'll get them a couch. Yeah, together. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> so yeah. that's it. Yeah, huge. What's been happening in your world? Um, What's I been... think we've had three weeks since we last caught up. Properly. Like, properly would... like this. Yeah. I have done lots of boring training for my own self. What, really? Would you say boring? Well, I gave myself a deload week. Um, always we just need like to, for Niall to put in like a disclaimer button that then you know it cuts the audio this disclaimer goes in this is not how you deload this is not this is not how maybe you should deload but it's not not how you should deload. but it's also an option I called it deload week and I did it so we can call it a deload as well um, I scheduled a bit of a training block for four or five weeks working on some weak points which went well yeah incredible I did tempo to the knee deadlifts highly recommend them no, uh, anyone who was struggling for position off the floor. Uh, I did it with power bar as well. Uh, some people are going to argue power bar versus bendy bar. Yeah, the, is, the, is, the, you shouldn't do it, you should do it. However, for me personally, I fucking love lifting with that because I suck off the floor, so that reinforces that. Um, so I did all that gross stuff for four weeks, and as my reward on d week, I would max out my equipped deadlift <laughs> on a <laughs> deadlift bar. If in, anyone ever gets to play, like, the... Coaching you is an experience. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. I've explained it to a few people before as you see a child running with a pair of scissors. You don't stop them running. You just take the scissors off them and replace it with something a bit more safe. That is what <laughs> coaching you is like. It is an experience. It teaches you a lot. And mostly I think it teaches you how to go with the flow. You just gotta let be bad be be bad. He does his thing and you just sit back and get to watch the pleasure. Yeah, I promise there's an underlying purpose to the program. There is, you know, we stick to very, you know, the principles that we coach by are 
Yeah, and, and I'm always there. It's just, and for me, I have a rule. It's got to be fun. So, hundred percent. That's my number one rule for everything. I've got to enjoy what I'm doing. So, 100%. I know at the end of those four or five weeks, I need something to so, like, tick off. Yes, yeah, so we put that suit on. And where'd you go? How'd you go? Awesome, mad fun. Your your whole crew was here. Oh, that's right. It was training camp. Training camp. Yeah. Which we'll talk about, I think. We should definitely talk about. We'll definitely um, talk about. Give a little yeah, everyone was there. Look. Gwen was there. Polly was there. You were there. My OG training partner, Kev. All you boys in my corner. Ricky Goodyear. Ricky Goodyear was there. That photo. Yeah, super sick. Shout out to Gwen for me. So, so fuck it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see what he wrote? No, what did he write? He was like the goat as in Ricky. No, the king. Mm-hmm. Him he called himself a gangster. Yes. Called Polly the big dog. <laughs> you the goat. And then called me queer boy. I'm like, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Lucky I love that big fuck. He's good. He is the man. So anyway, anyways, sorry. Pulled, pulled the suit on. Um, What'd you pull? 291. Locked. I'm going to call it. I locked it out. You did lock it. up with it. And then I fell over with it. Yes. Anyone who's done some quick lifting before, my suit was super tight. And I was struggling for balance. I think it's the first time I pulled in one for a while. Anyway, locked it out. 291's all time PB. I pulled 290 in a suit 2013. Fuck. So I'm super stoked. I had to make an adult decision at 180, and I always knew I had to make that call as to whether I shoot for 300 and not have a go at a PB, or I'd be an adult and choose a path where I can go for 291 and then leave if then have a shot at 300. And so, did you? Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. It wouldn't matter how slow that 291 or what happened. Even, and to be honest, if I missed that 291, I'd load 300. I'm not, that, that's the first time I've ever had it in my hands. It's the first time I've ever asked for that on a barbell. You're that a fuck fucking mentality. sick. This and is the mentality that I fucking love about you. That's why I love training. That's why my training's gone so fucking well. And it's the old school, let's fucking go. Me and Gwaine talked about it. We watched your 260 deadlift and we're like, maybe 280. And you looked at us both and just go 291. And I was like, okay. But there was no, there was no hesitant from me. Like I knew as soon as you looked at me and said 291, it was gonna pull. And you did. And then you looked at me and said 300 and I was like, okay. And I just loaded. Yeah. And looking back on that moment, I had absolute confidence I'd pull that 300. I, I know what happened. You could definitely pull yeah. through. And Watching it. Gwen gave me some really good feedback, which was sick. Yeah, and it was just too out of far in front of me. Yep. Went out in front. I struggled for grip on the 291 because I didn't place my thumbs right because I haven't fucking handled that kind of weight well, ever. Yeah. <laughs> but I, my last pulls were 180 a week ago. Yeah. So I just missed my thumb placement on my hook. Last, was it 180 conventional or tempo depth? Tempo depth. Just couldn't assume it. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um... Yeah, so got, and I was super appreciative of Gwen and his feedback and you boys. So, push pull in, well, I don't know what date it'll be after when this is released, but from today, it's I've got three three training sessions in the suit, which okay. is what I need. Yeah. And then we'll we came up with a plan before, not yeah. going to pull anything more than 280, was it? Yeah, thereabouts. I'll look for That's something. That's what we need. Like I want to pull one that, one that I could do two at. Yeah, perfect. And that's all we need. And then Cruise we'll, in. And then I know 300 is there, so I'll just go straight to it. I don't think I don't think over like too many people over peak. Oh, dude, without a doubt, bro. It's you see it. You, they come in under cook. You see it all the time. They push for big numbers in training. When the biggest training thing I have taken away in the last year and a bit with my own training and developing this business at the same time, you have to be strong on the day. Yeah. You do not have to be strong in the gym. No, and that, that's a question I ask my guys now because pe- people will, you, you get that. They're like, yeah, Yo, you're holding me back, you're holding me back. So, yeah, yeah, motherfucker, I am. Because you need to perform on the day. Yeah. So, what day's the comp? That's when you need to be strong. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I guess the perfect example was the deadlift comp I did last year. Mm. I missed 220 in the gym. Mm. And like, I'm embarrassed to say that. I think there was a couple of other reasons. Like I go on into that session saying I was gonna pull 205 as an opener and that's it. Mm. Then Kane's like, you know what it's like with Kane. He's like, nah, do it all. Oh. Yeah, no. But I was like, anyways, I missed 220. And I'm gonna fucking, I was like going to that day of the comp, I'm gonna embarrass myself. My best pull's 280, I'm gonna miss 220. Pull 205 easy opener, and then I pull 240, yeah. which is what I wanted. Yeah, which is sick. Sets you up for... And it was fucking, like, well, it's really easy. Yeah. It yeah. was spot on. It was just what you need. Hey, you've got a comp now in... Two weeks. Again, two weeks from our today. today. God knows what today. We're fucking new 
we're from the future. Yeah. What date is Wait, that? Wait, are we from the future? Will we? We are. I don't know what we are. No, else, what are we? We're in the future. He's not sure either. All right. But what like, date's your comp? It's the 9th of February. Yep. Sim City. Sim City. Yep. It's a national qualifier. Just Sick. going in for just a, you know, some platform talk. Platform. Exactly. I've always said dip the toe in the water, but I know I'm going to get to comp day and I'm not going to dip the toe. I'm going to go all in. I really struggle, especially with you handling me, but <laughs> okay, I, 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 I'm a comp day lifter and I very much know that. Yeah. Like, I'm very smart now. Now. Yeah, you lift every kilo that's there for the day, right? Exactly. Like I had a really shit deadlift session today. Mm. I was supposed to pull 250. 225 did not move how it should. High level fatigue. So I was like, cool, I'm just going to back it off. That's smart. And now, shout out to Gwen because he called me smart today too for the same reason. <laughs> Old Brandon would have gone, nah, fucking load it, miss it, crack the shits. Yeah, or maybe even worse, maybe you get it and you bury yourself even more, right? Exactly. Come comp day, you pull fucking nothing. Exactly. So pull back. Pulled 225 for a single, just did some crazy singles at 170, did some squats, did some lying leg curls, and cooled it. And so I'm just cool. gonna deload it to come and taper it. Yeah, you know how to hold weight, you'll be strong. Yeah, and so I'll be sweet, like I'm confident in my abilities. Like, you know, I missed you know, the 225 came up, it was shit, I was disappointed, but then I got over it. I know now that I can be strong in comp day. Yeah, 100%. And you don't. You don't have any clients lifting in that comp either, right? No, it's going to be beautiful. This so is, you get this is a day, different experience. The day that's all about you for a change. It's going to be very odd not going between squats to thinking about others. Yeah, and if I'm helping you, man, all you got to do is worry about lifting. It's going to be great. Whatever you need. I've got sandwiches, whatever you want. I'm so excited for the sandwiches. Yeah. Every comp I've coached Johnny at, himself or his partner Bob have made me sandwiches. They are the fucking best sandwiches. Lots of, I've got pre-trainer too. We get some pre-trainer. I'm not taking a pre-trainer. Ugh. Boring. Can you please tell the audience how many scoops of pre-training you had before you pulled? Uh, all of them is how many I had. Uh, and then how again, you... disclaimer: this is not recommended dosage. And then how much Red Bull did you have? With you? Uh, I had four, four Red Bulls. Four? Yes. <laughs> I thought it was two. Fuck, they were big cans. Yeah, I like a stimulated environment. <laughs> oh my god! Holy <laughs> shit! No disclaimer. Disclaimer. Fuck. Yeah, just name the shit out of I do not recommend that. You're the only person I know, which is something I also want to talk about today. Your caffeine tolerance is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, it can be good, but I am I am trying to be reasonably, I guess, smart about it. Mm. I guess people see me with a Red Bull, but like it's not like I drink them all day. Yeah, no, that's couple, true. I have a couple of coffees in the morning and then something... A, Particularly shout out to Amy talking to her and uh, managing fatigue yep. that comes with training. Is definitely I do normally have a coffee or Red Bull in the afternoon because I do a late shift. Yeah, it's something I've pulled out now. Okay, and I think it's going to be super important because you can yeah, yeah, hundred percent sleep better, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, like this is going to be an even, adjustment period. E- yeah, fucking good luck. <laughs> <laughs> even that, like, yeah, I know you don't have them all the time, but man, like. Most people, like I myself, if I have, I've worked kind of worked out now, if I have more than 400 grams before training of just caffeine, too much, my training shit. <laughs> you seem to have more and get better. Oh yeah. I just don't know how that's possible. <laughs> like the science that I know, and even talking with, like I've asked Amy and she's like, he's an anomaly, he's the freak. It's amazing. <laughs> and people who, you know, know you would know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Again, not recommended. <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> I feel like this whole podcast, this whole episode is not recommended. Please, yeah. under adult supervision. Yeah, 100%. I, I will, one thing I will say is I'm very aware that being in that heightened state at, in a training session does accumulate some serious fatigue. Um, you are wrecked. So I will, very typically, if I hit sessions like that, I will only do that fortnightly, maybe. Or, do you reckon that can be in Oh, yeah. That's yeah. obviously my own power. And Shout out Matty. Matt Coyle, he's hitting some hard deadlifts today. He's, they, they sound hard. They're like, well, like strong hard deadlifts. Like he's killing it. Um, I don't know if he's competing this year, but that's another conversation. That'd be fun to see him on the platform. No, I think he's competing bodybuilding. Oh, that other sport. That other sport, which like... It's yeah. a weird world. It is a weird <laughs> world, but he is really good at it. He walks around shredded all year round. For those of you who know, we don't know who we're talking about, Matt Coyle, owner of Valhalla Strength now. Yeah. Um, but 
yeah, I don't know if he's prepping for that or whatever, but he's always lean. Yeah, he's way lean. It's scary. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even, what? I wouldn't know. I don't want that. No. I mean, that's your, <laughs> that's your ice cream. <laughs> yeah. I, I had abs once at 90. It was horror. I was miserable the whole time. I remember this. Because you pulled a triple body weight dead. Yeah. At 90 kilos. Yeah. Down in Slaughterhouse. Yeah, Slaughterhouse, Melbourne. That was unreal. 270. 270, 90, yeah. At 90. That's fucking insane. Yeah, it's cool. Everything was going into to doing that for that one day. Thank fuck it happened because I didn't want to have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, true. Because since then, you've gone from 90 kilos body weight to the massive... What are you now? 116, 116, yeah. That's good. It won't fucking move though. It's frustrating. But my new normal's there. I'm no longer like 114. Yeah, we've created homeostasis at 117. Whereas before it was... Wow, 110. Your body would just sit naturally about 110, 113. Now you've struggled to get over that. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're just casually waiting here. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to be over 120. And I can't wait to have you at 140. This is a decision not made by me. My partner is not happy about it, <clears throat> but I don't know what to say next. You, to you'll I'm be happy. My hole. I'm digging a hole. You, you'll be happy with it. You I am very excited to be <laughs> 120. Like I've always naturally thought I should sit a bit heavier. Like before we digress down the realm of my mental health, like I've just always wanted to be big. Yeah, but I, I can fucking remember being a kid being like I'm gonna be jacked so but I've never been more than 108 cool that was pretty big for yeah. me that was like I was only that for 24 hours yeah and that was hard to fucking breathe so so we'll get your CPAP machine we'll get your I've had one of those man <laughs> I literally like it did not I couldn't adjust so but I'm open to trying new things to yeah. be where I need to be which is 140 140, a decision made by Johnny, Amy, and Gwen. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, it's for your best. For my best? Yes, it's okay. for your okay, best. Cool. It's for your total. Now, I want to know, you did your epic day. Yes. Which was super sick. I was yep. lucky to be a part of it. You must be very proud. It still that, hasn't really sunk in. To put um, that out there. It was something that I've been wanting to do for a while. So, the and it was exclusively for our members first up for my clients, our team. That was super sick. Um, it was a day that I wanted to as a, uh, use it as an opportunity to obviously, I guess, trial run training camp, which is now what it's called, and um, give back to the team. Uh, like, it, we had fucking a whole day. We started at eight, and then we had the team dinner and awards that went on for fucking ever. I don't know, I think I left at like 10.30 to uh-huh. get Gwen home, and I was fucked. Mm. But it was a, Fucking insane day. It was unreal. We Just had put the crew together. Bro. It was sick. Yeah, bro. We had um, like thirty-five people. No, thirty-six. Thirty anywhere between thirty-five and forty. I don't know. Rock up to start training with uh, uh, in Stafford, and we had Paul, our team's EP, who is Irish Jesus. Mm. And like I said, like incredibly smart. Not even kidding. Like yesterday, long time ago for this podcast, but in the future thingy. But Lisa Ol, when took her in, had a bit of pain, walked out no pain. He is a healer. Jesus hands. He man, but like his brain is. Anyway, so digress again. I'm really bad at this. Hmm. He spoke about um, pre-engagement work to hmm. enhance performance. So yeah. getting and keep it simple. In, simple, but. Like, oh, complex but simple. Yeah. He yeah. took the most complex thing, said a whole bunch of words, and then everyone was like, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And what he talked about was really cool. Like, you know, he talked about the role of the eccentric Leone a lot, which I think gets very uh, overlooked, mm. especially while squatting. Um, his brain works on a completely different level. Uh, spoke a lot about engaging the things we need for the big three obviously mm-hmm. Scott mentioned deadlifting covered that yep. um, which was very insightful gave us a whole bunch of pre heavy exercises to do pre-engagement exercises um, which have helped massively mm-hmm. like even the week from since we're obviously in the future but even in that week everyone's like wow this everyone's is, changed how they're doing yeah and it's like this is fucking awesome so it's been great I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do and you know he looks after a lot of our crew yeah. He's a big part of this team already. Um, he's coming down to Pro Raw. Super sick. Like, for you know, 
social aspects, but also to be there and see what we do at the top level. And he's coming to all our local comps a little bit and he's getting really involved. So I love that. I love that. You know, I've, I've known Paul for a while, but now to see him and this team's great. I just want to give a quick shout out to start. Like his team are phenomenal. Mm. They work very hard to get all our crew in and I can't thank them enough. Um, but then we also have Amy. Obviously everyone knows Amy now and she was phenomenal. She really challenged people's thought and then I think I had a bit of a motive to get her in and challenge some people's thoughts that I really, really wanted and she did that, which was perfect. Gwen came in and he was awesome. His approach to... I wanted to talk about mindset, get, in, get people challenging their beliefs get them thinking differently. And he did that in a very unique way. One of the coolest little uh, mindset conversations I've ever seen. Very fun to see you be super awkward. It was very awkward and very like, I I don't classify myself as a person who's not self-aware. So I could see where he was going and I was like, you're a dick. So if we go back, what he did for those at home, Mm. I think you thought he was just gonna stand in front of everyone. I did, I had no idea this was happening. And then it, he started off super quiet and just sort of fluffed about a bit, which kind of you're like, what's going on here? And then he just goes, hey, Brando, you, grab a chair. Yeah. And then he chair. says, guys, we're going to sit down and interview Brando and just have a conversation. And we did. And it was a brilliant conversation. Like, I've got the footage now back this week and looked over and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Just like the way he directed the conversation, mm-hmm. I, knew what, like, I knew where he was going and I was like, I had two options. Kind of not really. Because I knew if I gave a shitty answer, he would just be like, don't be a fuckwit. <laughs> so then I just was like, okay, he wants me super vulnerable. He wants me to open up. Let's go there. Mm. Which after 18 months of therapy, yeah, I can do that now. Like it's very easy for me to talk about it. Like mm. shit that's happened and all this sort of stuff. You talked to Brando two years ago, you would never get that. Yeah. Um, and it was awesome, man. Like the, a lot of the feedback came back, uh, and they were saying how great this segment was. Uh, Super cool. Uh, from your perspective, what do you think? Man, as I remember, just brought the team together. That was it. He did. It really he, did. He, for me, I tried. I tried. Yeah, like everyone got to see a side of you that they may not have seen before. Mm. And as the coach and the person leading the ship, like, yeah. it's super cool. I think Brie, uh, one of my clients, said it perfectly. Like, she showed, oh, Gwen was able to bring together other coaching client mm-hmm. which was cool and shout out to Gwen because he's come back up for the next one yeah so I um, highly recommend yes when that's up and running that should be you launching be it would, would be launched by now but well the amount of people that were asking me how can I go to it yeah well, um, was hectic and I was like look man this, I'll put all the links in the show stuff. notes because uh, it'll all be up like uh, the marketing materials already out there all being set up as we speak mm-hmm. um, and I say as we speak I mean It'll be out. It's all, yeah, it's all out there. Um, <laughs> I'll link it in the, the show notes, but we've got Training Camp 2 coming up April 4th, locked yeah. in again. Um, we've got Paul, Amy, Gwen back. Uh, this time around, we're also going to add in a technical lifting aspect. Yeah, nice. So myself and Gwen, I'm going to walk the room. Walk the room, just, you know, discuss a little bit. Cool. Um, he's someone I've kind of looked to as a mentor, mm-hmm. as a coach, um, to have his import. So I've taken on a few of his philosophies. He's bounced ideas off me. So it's been really cool to see our relationship grow yeah. in that aspect. So it's gonna be cool to put this together with him. So there's gonna whole new aspect. So we went from just the pre-engagement, ex nutrition mindset to just we had a team day like, it was all about us so we just went and had lifted some heavy shit mm. having Gwen there lift was fucking sick as soon as he yelled at a bar I am aroused yeah it is fucking insane the way he lifts I love very it. aggressive I love it well you know we it's a, it's a different aggression isn't it yeah we have by the time everyone should have should have listened to the Gwen podcast and the way he explains when he talks about the way he approaches it and that, that shark man I got goosebumps I, every time it's something I've adopted except yeah. my animal's a bit different and it's yeah. sick like the, what he does is oh, everyone's just gonna think I'm in love with him but really he's a dick who well, you are I am but you can't tell him that <laughs> he's gonna listen to this and just fucking it's out there now uh, but no training camp's awesome we got the next one coming up I'm super pumped opening it up to the public just to see you know what they think because yeah. really, you know, all of our crew loved it. It's going to be sick, so I know it's something cool. Yeah, hell yeah. It's going to be A lot of work and I'm pumped. 
Big but, yeah. yeah. And there's the GPC States in there. GPC yeah. States, Pro Raw, all yeah. before that. We're doing a comp tomorrow. Yes, you got your Australia Day comp. January 26th comp. FB Novice comp. FB yeah, Novice yeah, comp. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Um, yeah, it's going to be tomorrow. We're going to have some fun with that. So, being that it's a novice comp with a bit of sanction, where there is some sanction lifting for people who want to qualify for nationals in there. But we make it sort of super fun. Yeah, it, it is, man. The you games. won't, you, people, people who don't know the gym, the front of the gym, we have some big set of windows at the front, so we set up some marquees out there. And what's under those marquees? Under there is a literal, not like a, I have a, it is a literal ton of ice in a tub that I'm going to fill with water. So we'll have a ton of ice with water. So you'll be able to stand in the tub of ice with water, eating barbecue, watching powerlifting. Yeah, it's literally... It's going to be so fun. And now with your renovations. Yeah, we've done some renos at the gym. You super. can see everything. Yeah, you'll be able to see everything. The gym's it's, looking super nice. It is, man. We've just got to get some paint on there, which is coming. Will, will have come. <laughs> I know a guy. Oh, we got a guy. Of course you do. <laughs> we've discussed this. You have a guy for fucking everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so that'll get painted. We've got outdoor gym now. Really? Yeah, dude. Lid off. Lids off. It's awesome. Yeah, we've got Chin Dip Break out of there, encouraging everyone to pull stuff out of the car park. Yes. Um, I want to do a Friday Arvo, start doing Friday Arvo sessions and putting a bench out there. Yes. Yeah. Lids off. It's, it's level enough to be able to do some squatting and deadlifting as well, so... All right, well. And yeah. you've got some smart people on your team that can yeah. do level it too. Yeah, so we'll do yeah Friday Arvo lit off sessions are going to start so happening. Cool. It's going to be fun. Yeah, got a light out there as well, so night time people will be able to do similar stuff. It's going to make sort of, particularly in this hot time, it's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. Yeah, bloody hell, it's been... Sorry, Niall. Sorry. We spoke about the chair. i got to get a new chair <laughs> or a Canon WD-40. If anyone wants to sponsor and throw us a new chair. Yeah. Squeak. Chess chair sponsor. Shout out. Yeah, yeah. Our logo's done, which is super cool. Shout out to Rob Hall. Rob yeah. just to Savage Hall. I don't know if that's how you go by. Um, it's, that was awesome. Like, I spoke to... If anyone who doesn't know Rob Hall, search Rob Hall Animal Cage. That's it. Yeah, done. And then enjoy that. Yeah, and that dude did the logo. He did it. He is talented, man. Yeah. Like, um, hopefully, we're going to reach out and get him on the podcast as well. He seems he was open to it and yeah. keen. So, yeah. He, I had two conversations, no more than that, about what ideas around we had. Mm. Um, He's made it. And he, he did. He took that photo. He drew that from that photo, made us more jacked. I'm happy. I'm that. very happy. I think he was thinking this is what we're going to look like when we're at 140, 150. Yeah, absolutely. That's future us. I'm down with that. Maybe a couple of shirts. I'm down for a shirt. Yeah, if I feel... <laughs> hopefully by then I've matured when I'm at 140, but I feel if I'm at 140, I'm not wearing a shirt. <laughs> Shirts are optional, I shouldn't. Yeah, so... We'll, I'll mature by then. <laughs> and maybe we'll put something up here for the video people. Yes, because we'll watch have YouTube by then. Oh, dude, I'm so frustrated with YouTube. I can't I wait till we have it, though. I know. I didn't know you had to wait. To Maybe start. this will be on YouTube. It will be. It'll yes. all end up on YouTube. Oh, well, yeah. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> That's, it's just that the timeline doesn't match up. That's hilarious. We really are terrible with this timeline. Yeah. It's like back to the future, future. But you don't know, like... Dude, I haven't seen those movies in a long time. Like, if we talk about the future now, are we affecting the future? No. If this drops in the future? No. Maybe. You gotta watch Avengers Endgame. I'm gonna edit the part about time travel. Yeah. And the favorite, like one of my favorite parts about that movie is yeah. honestly where Paul Rudd starts listing movies and then says hot tub time machine. Yeah. That was amazing. Anyways, super digress. Um, I forgot uh, the, completely forgot. The what? I don't know, I completely forgot. Yeah. Oh well. The Maybe it's time yeah. for the 10 random questions probably is yeah sick so I think it's only fair that we do them as well 100% um, and we'll get some incredibly interesting answers you're up first this time uh, I went first I went yeah, first yeah, yeah, yeah. so 10 random questions mm. hit me oh, I'm so sorry well, they're no longer random I already know them. yeah this is 10 <laughs> questions then 10 <laughs> questions is favourite colour pink of course I favourite movie Top Gun oh classic yeah it's the greatest movie ever made. I mean, hundred percent. I've got a favorite movie. 
everyone has a favourite movie. Yeah. Like, it's a great movie. It's yeah. phenomenal. It's Top Gun 2 comes out this year. Yeah, I know. I'm, I plan on uh, renting a movie cinema and inviting Top Gun fans. You can do that. Only. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm top, a Top Gun fan. Uh, well, we will find out because part of the process there will be a question and answer where you'll be emailed and you'll need to complete said question and answer. I'm looking and if you get a 100% score, I will allow you in. And then you must also dress up in said Top Gun outfits. I would like to do the volleyball scene. That may be 140. <laughs> yes, you should. Uh, if you could have dinner with anyone, who would it be? Man, who would I have dinner with? See, that's a tough question. See, do I, want, do I want to think about the person or the person or the dinner? Like, will that person get me the good dinner? Okay, so, so we'll, like we'll split this question into two. <laughs> what, what kind of if you could have like? dinner, if you could have any dinner, what would it be? And who would you have dinner with? Oh man, be steak. I love steak. <sighs> so... And like, I want a really fucking good steak. Like, where we went? Yeah, that place is good steak. Apparently there's one better. Damn. In this, literally yesterday, there was a Terry Sparks put up a post about steak places. Yeah. Uh, Black Hyde was up there. Moo Moo's is apparently really good. I've never heard of it. Yeah. And uh, Thomas Lilly says somewhere in Sunnybank. Yeah, cool. So we have three, wait, yeah. two? Two steak places yeah, to check we're out. And I reckon Mark Bell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. He'd be an interesting one. Hell yeah. All right. What is your spirit animal? Horse. Of course, the song Horses. The best. I have watched Johnny Max out to that song. <laughs> Favorite food? Uh, pizza. Of course. And sandwiches. And sa- Yeah, whoa. <laughs> I did not pick up on that. Okay, okay. Would you rather look like a potato or feel like a potato? I'd like to look like a potato. I think that particularly like a more of a pear-shaped one, because that big, thick, trunky area would be super handy for squatting. That fucking power belly, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm about. Favourite superhero? I'm going to go Superman. Whoa, really? Yeah. I'm... Yeah, no, wait, I knew this. Sorry, I got confused with the conversation. Because he's the best. He no is. one can beat him. He is. Yeah. He is. He like. Uh, he beats Batman every single time. Now this is a conversation. Obviously, me being. Comic- He's got laser eyes. I, he has heat vision, but um, I'm a comic book nerd. Yeah. So we'll just like. I'm, I'm going to answer the other question, then we'll come back to this. Yeah. Okay? Well, then we can do something. We're going to talk about this. Do you believe in Santa? Hundred percent. Yes. He still brings me Christmas presents every year. <laughs> Don't know. Okay. He does. I get a present under my tree from Santa to Johnny from Santa. I got no words. Actually, you try and tell me that's not real. Do you cry in movies? Uh, no. You don't? No. If it's about a dog? I don't like to watch that bit. But have you ever cried in no. a movie? Never. No. Never. Never. No, zero. We have very different answers. <laughs> what is the one thing you could do right now that could make you famous that isn't coaching or powerlifting? Well, I think I've already said it. I'd say pizza. Yeah, that's right. You are either. But no, you've... Yeah, okay. Okay, so we've done your 10 questions. Yeah. Let's go back to this Superman Batman argument. Superman's better. He is. Exactly. See, leave it there. Argument. But, 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 no, no, there is. is. Better. Yes, he's better. Yeah, <laughs> but there is like <laughs> evidence in the comics. I'm talking more of a practical application. If he was in this current world, not the comic book world where it's fictionalized and people are writing stories. Yeah, but Batman beats him. Yeah, but what about the real world? What happens? That, but like you. The, no, it's a comic world. No, but even in the in this world, if yeah. there's a Superman, there's a Batman. Yeah, that's fine. And if there's a Batman, he knows Superman's weakness, and he Krypton. still beats him. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. He still beats him. But you got laser eyes. He's shooting from. His I know. Like I don't get me wrong. I have a Superman ring that my mum made me for my twenty first. Like, yeah, I love Superman, mm. but he can be beat. Mm. He can't beat his own. I'm gonna disagree. Like if he was smart enough, and like if he was he's pretty ruthless, smart. He's pretty smart. but but if he was ruthless and yeah. wasn't a nice guy, he would easily just destroy Batman. Exactly. See. But he obviously knows he can, so he doesn't. He doesn't. doesn't, doesn't and he, just, he knows he can. <laughs> yep. Okay, your turn. Favorite color? Blue. Oh, why? It is me. Are you? From, yeah, but are you from Queensland? Yeah, I know. What, what are you doing? Yeah. Favorite movie? Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Um, tattoo. 
Yeah, well, it's it's Infinity War or Endgame. I can't decide. Mm. Infinity was so fucking good, and the way it ended, like you just don't see that. Anyways, sorry. If you could have dinner with anyone, who would it be? Uh, probably be my grandfather who passed yeah. away a couple years ago. I'd actually love to have dinner with him one more time. That'd be sick, bro. That would be. The spirit animal. I got two answers here. Yourself <laughs> and a gorilla. Yeah, fucking gorillas. Favorite food? My nonna's pasta, hands down. Damn. Mum, if you're listening, sorry. Is there a sauce that goes on the pasta? It's just like her spaghetti bolognese. Yeah, you will straight not up. It. It's the so fucking simple. best. You want to look like a potato or feel like a potato? <sighs> I'm going to say look, because I feel like feeling like a potato would be shit. Yeah, they don't look like they're having a good time. Yeah, so I'd rather... But then, if you... Oh, you know what? We're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> Favourite Superman? Superhero? Oh. You, you're like asking me to fucking save two people right now. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't answer that because I've got multiple. I think... I'll give you three then. The Superman, Captain America, Iron Man. Yeah, well played. Do you believe in Santa? No. It's because he doesn't bring presents. <laughs> Do and there's probably a reason for that. Um, do you cry in the movies? All the fucking time. Yeah, like in Endgame when. Okay, so no, you want to hear a story about that? I would love to. I went and saw Endgame eight times at the movies. Cried eight times? No, I stopped <laughs> by going to like I cried twice when Black Widow died and then when Tony died. I stopped crying when Black Widow died after the third time I saw it, and I stopped crying for Tony at the fifth time. So, six, seven, eight didn't cry. Nice. Well played. Thank uh, you. One thing you do now that can make you famous that we don't know about. It's a company, obviously, Palestinian coaching. <sighs> oh, shit. Um, it's not beatboxing. It's definitely not beatboxing. <laughs> Building Lego. Yeah. Yeah. That's my new hobby. You serious? Yeah. I fucking frost the Lego. Yeah, no. Maybe Lego day. We should have a Lego day. I've got a few, I've got a few, like, unopened boxes at home. So do I. Fucking. My partner's real pissed about it, because I, <laughs> I keep buying it. And I, I don't have, like, I when I have the time, yeah. I like to sit down and do it, but, um, as you know, we're time poor. Yeah. Um, so but get around some Lego building. Maybe people could just video, we could do a video of us from Lego building. It's the fun, like, it literally, because how I actually got onto it was, my psych was like, you need something outside of work. And I'm like, yeah, but all I like is like, you know, I read comic books and I read books, but the books I read are literally about things which is like, I found Lego. I don't know how, actually I don't even know how I got that. Beautiful. But yeah, there you go. Lego, done. But you know there's a TV show for that. Yeah, I watched it. You could be on that. Oh, like building it? Yeah. I thought you meant like the Lego sh- stuff. No, no, there's a TV show for Lego building. There you go. Anyway, that's it. Sweet. Um, Done. We'll do How that do we sign off when it's just the two of us? Where do we people? Where do you find us? You will find me at Johnny B. Baden yes. on the Instagrams. Yeah. Oh, yes. And you will have found us on the platform Instagram. The future is now. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Actually, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, yes, we will have launched. And if you haven't, make sure you do like that page. Yeah. So I'll put it all in the show notes. Um, you can find me at Epic Coaching. Epic underscore coaching on their gram. Facebook, Epic Coaching. Also, going like retro, let's go all the way back to episode one. Myself and a client are creating a TikTok. Oh god. It was it's just like it's what the people want. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's it's what the people want. They want TikTok, we're gonna give them TikTok. By this stage, hopefully I will put it in the show notes. Oh god. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Alright. Thank you. This is the Platform Podcast with B-Bad and Brandon. (laughs) Fucking nailed it.